Hello, mate. Are you ready to head over to Australia to see the Great Barrier Reef? Well, come on and let's go. Hi, guys. It's Mrs. Marusic again. I don't know about you, but I am loving this virtual background. I feel like I'm really at the beach. I got my sunglasses. And you know what? I didn't even have to put sunscreen on <laughs> because, of course, we're stuck at home for a few more weeks. But while we are at home, we're gonna have fun on some of these virtual field trips. And today is one of the my favorite places in the whole world. I actually haven't been there, but I really, really can't wait to visit it one day. It's way over in Australia and it's called the Great Barrier Reef. I love everything to do with the ocean. I love the beach, I love snorkeling. I haven't yet scuba dived because I'm a little bit claustrophobic, but I think I want to one day. And the Great Barrier Reef is one of the coolest places in the world. So let's dive in and learn all about the Great Barrier Reef. Wow, well, here I am at the Great Barrier Reef, and it is gorgeous. Just look at that beautiful coral. Look at all those fish. Look at that gorgeous blue ocean. Well, I bet you didn't know, but the Great Barrier Reef is one of the longest, largest collection of living things. See, coral are actually organisms, animals. They're really, really small, and when they die, they leave behind their calcium deposits which kind of forms this rock that the new coral grow upon. And so they're actually a collection of organisms and home to so many other type of animals, including sharks and whales, eels, uh, the, the, the sea cow, uh, so many different organisms, and it's such a great place. Let's learn more about it. We're looking at pictures of a coral reef, a rocky piece of ground in the ocean that's made of and home to animals called coral. I wonder if this is the Great Barrier Reef. That's the biggest coral reef in the entire world. It's in the ocean near the country of Australia. See these parts of the picture? Those are the coral. Oh, you're right, Squeaks. Coral looks a lot like plants, but they're not. Coral are small animals that make and live in a hard, rocky material. Instead of moving around like most animals, they attach to the rocks and stay there for the rest of their lives. That's why they might seem like plants at first, because plants don't move around either. One small part of a coral reef can have thousands of coral all living together. Millions of coral over thousands of years have made the Great Barrier Reef. This huge reef is about 2,300 kilometers long. That's so long that if you could drive along it in a car, it would take you almost an entire day and night. Like all coral reefs, the Great Barrier Reef is home to lots of other kinds of animals too, big and small. Take for example, the dugong. These big animals eat plants. Lots of plants. Dugongs spend their whole day looking for and grazing on the sea grasses that grow on coral reefs like the Great Barrier Reef. If the reef didn't exist, these gentle giants wouldn't have enough to eat. Other animals need the rocky coral reef so that they have a safe place to live, like moray eels. They might look fierce and dangerous, but they're really very shy. So they spend most of their time hiding in caves and spaces in the reef. <laughs> yes, Squeaks, just like you're hiding behind this desk. Other animals use the coral reef to hide in a different way, like the cuttlefish. Cuttlefish can change the color of their skin, so they look a lot like the coral reef. That helps the cuttlefish hide from other animals that want to eat them. The Great Barrier Reef is an important place for all these animals, and it's an important place for people, too. The reef helps protect Australia from the strong waves that storms churn up from the water. We can also make some types of medicine using the plants and animals that live there. But the ocean is changing, and that means changes for the Great Barrier Reef, too. Some things people do, like use too much electricity, make the world get a little warmer. In including the oceans. As the ocean gets warmer, coral can have a hard time getting enough food. And with fewer coral, the animals that live around them have a harder time finding enough food too. Another problem is pollution in the ocean. Chemicals, litter, and other kinds of waste that can eventually make their way into the water and hurt the animals that live there. But people are working on ways to help the animals that live on and around the reef to stay healthy, like learning how to keep pollution from getting into the ocean. And there are things that we can do to help too, no matter where we live. For example, things that go down drains in our sinks or bathtubs can sometimes end up in the ocean. 
We can help keep the ocean clean by only putting things we're supposed to down the drain. We can also make sure trash ends up in the garbage can or recycling bin where it belongs, which helps keep it from getting into rivers or the ocean. There are lots of awesome living things in the ocean, and if everyone works together, we can help keep them healthy. Thank Okay guys, so now that we know a little bit of a background about the Great Barrier Reef, let's learn more about Australia, how the Great Barrier Reef came about, and more details about the organisms that live there. Australia is one of Earth's seven continents, and it's totally different than anywhere else on the planet. Australia's amazing landscape includes tropical beaches, ancient rainforests, and wide open plains. And Australia has all sorts of different wildlife, from kangaroos to koalas, Many of the animals that live in Australia are truly unique and different than almost anywhere else on Earth. But Australia's unique wildlife doesn't just live on land. Off the coast of this extraordinary continent out in the Pacific Ocean is Australia's world famous Great Barrier Reef. A great, the Great Barrier Reef is absolutely gigantic. It's almost 1,600 miles long. That's the same as about 25,000 soccer fields lined up all in a row. The Great Barrier Reef is so big that astronauts can even see it from space. The Great Barrier Reef is a long chain of islands and their surrounding coral reefs that combine to make a home for thousands of different ocean plants and animals. There are more kinds of different living creatures here than almost anywhere else on Earth. Now, an island is just a small piece of land out in the water. But what exactly is this massive coral reef that surrounds some ocean islands? And where did it come from? To think about this, let's start off small. When you zoom in and look closely, you can see that coral structures can be made up of thousands of tiny coral polyps. Believe it or not, each polyp is actually an individual animal, just like you are an individual person. There are thousands of different coral species or types of coral on our planet, and they come in a wide range of shapes and sizes. Now, coral polyps live together in colonies, and as they live and die over thousands and thousands of years, they lay down a type of skeleton or foundation. New coral grows on top of old coral, and as corals keep growing and dying, the foundation gets bigger and bigger. Over thousands of years, this process eventually creates a coral reef. One really cool thing about coral is the fact that it's a collection of living organisms, meaning animals. Um, but you might go, what? I thought animals move around. How did these coral get their food? Well, they actually get it in two different ways. And one of them is by having a symbiotic relationship with an algae called zooxanthella. We're going to talk about that a little bit in the next video. But a symbiotic relationship means that two organisms can actually help each other out. And so they can provide food and protection for each other. And as long as they're both benefiting, they don't mind working together. Coral polyps bring the microscopic zooxanthella into their body where they live together inside the polyp. The zooxanthella performs photosynthesis, turning sunlight into energy, just like a plant. So the zooxanthella helps the coral polyps by providing them with tons of energy during the day. The little polyps get the rest of their energy during the night when they use their tentacles, which are kind of like arms, to reach out and grab small food that passes by. In return, the coral polyps help the zooxanthella by providing them a safe, cozy environment to live. Well, I don't know about you, but so far I am in love with the Great Barrier Reef. And I really, really love to see all of those organisms, all those fish, all the sea turtle. Did you know the Great Barrier Reef is also home uh, to, for the breeding ground for humpback whales, dolphins, sharks, all those type of animals live around the Great Barrier Reef as well. Well, there's one thing that we need to worry about. Parts of the Great Barrier Reef are dying away, and that is due to a lot of man-made reasons. And so there are different things that we can do to help out, but this next video is gonna show us what one person is actually doing to help restore the Great Barrier Reef, and they call him a coral gardener. Let's take a look. People come to the Great Barrier Reef and expect doomsday. It has been publicised that the Great Barrier Reef is dead. I can assure you it's definitely not dead. However, the Great Barrier Reef is under threat. 
There are so many animals that are relying on us. We need to do something because if we lose all of this, it's going to have a huge impact. In 2016 and 2017, there was two mass bleaching events. And because it was consecutive, it had a significant impact on the Great Barrier Reef. An estimated one third of the Great Barrier Reef was affected by this, and we did lose a lot of coral. After the 2017 bleaching, we were hit with Tropical Cyclone Debbie, and that cyclone was a Category 4 that basically sat over the Whitsundays for about 30 hours. So we did lose a number of sites in the Whitsundays to cyclone damage. The day I jumped in at Lover's Cove after the cyclone, it was about four weeks after the cyclone, I really didn't want to get in because I kind of expected what was there. It was, it was the worst, just having that memory of this underwater city, just with corals everywhere, fish everywhere. It's so harsh that one day you got in and you didn't realise it was your last time. So now I just want to do whatever I can to help it get back to as close as what it was as possible. There's two methods of coral propagation that we're using at the moment. Collect coral, put them onto nurseries that we've actually built under the water in the marine park, and then give the corals time in these nurseries to get to a suitable size where we can then plant them back into the damaged sites. The other method that we're trialling here at the moment is to use coral raceways that are actually out of the water. These tubs use raw water that cycles through them to basically replenish whatever's in there. So we actually grab the corals from the wild, put them into the raceways, leave them there in the raw water as it cycles in a controlled environment for four to five months till they get to that size we need, and then outplant them back into the wild, into the sites where we've had cyclone damage. The advantage of using the raceways is it's controlled, it's right there, we have it in front of us. And if, God forbid, another cyclone comes along, at least then we have the coral fragments ready to go inside these raceways and the outplanting can be done much faster. So this is a coral raceway. This one here I actually designed late one night, some crazy idea. We're really lucky that the Queensland and Australian government actually funded this project. It's really good to get the support of the government and without them, none of this would have actually happened. It's the first time this is done in the region, so hopefully in the future, other places do the same thing. So this is a pretty exciting moment. We've got the coral raceways up and running, ready to go, and the very first coral is about to go in it. Let's do it. Well, this is it. All right, Coral. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Eight months of planning and this is it. The Coral's in. This will be one of the species that we will be propagating inside the raceways to then outplant into the wild. We've actually named him, we named him Steve. The longer we leave him in here and the longer he stays healthy, the more we know that this system really works. First coral. <laughs> Have a look at it. It is thriving. I reckon it's doubled in size already. No. <laughs> the Great Barrier Reef has a large ecosystem of animals, including fish, sea turtles, uh, the dugong, which is like the ocean cow, I guess I kind of compare it. I think he's so funny looking. It also um, is home to the breeding ground for humpback whales and even some of these guys. Oh, my pen disappears in the background, but even some of these guys um, are living in and around the Great Barrier Reef. And that's why it's really, really important that we take care of our environment so that we can take care of these organisms. Now, uh, I mentioned the humpback whales. I actually have a video showing you the migration of the humpback whales to the Great Barrier Reef, where they would give birth to their young, which are called calves. Let's take a look. Humpback whales have just made the long journey to the reef to escape the Antarctic winter.
They're here to carve in the warm tropical waters. Australia's east coast humpback population was hunted to near extinction by the 1960s. Less than 500 individuals survived the slaughter. Many believed then that the humpbacks were too far gone. Since protection in Australian waters began, these 40-ton giants have made a steady recovery. The population appears to be growing by about 10% a year. This year, around 20,000 humpbacks have made the journey to the reef. Majestic proof that when we care enough, we can strike a balance between our needs and those of the natural world. meet my friend, my turtle friend. I nicknamed him Crush. <laughs> um, so sea turtles are also one of my favorite animals that live at the Great Barrier Reef, and they are endangered. Um, part of the problem with the sea turtles is one, they use the Great Barrier Reef as their home, but they also come onto land to lay their eggs. Well, people love to live on that land. We love oceanfront property, right? I mean, I know I would want a beach house, but not at the expense of these sea turtles. So what you're gonna watch now is a little video about conserving that land and the place for these beautiful animals to live. They are gonna show how they tag them when the turtles come up to lay their eggs. They put a tag on them uh, so that they can keep track of the turtle population and help out wherever we can. Take a look. A lot of the animals migrate to this special place because it has these amazing attributes that these animals can rely upon. It's almost like a spider's web of connectivity. Everything's interconnected, and if you pull one piece out, you could actually disrupt the whole system. The fact that people have been coming here and you know, tagging turtles since the mid 70s is really, really important. So some of these animals have got a 30 year history. As human beings, we probably don't often stop to think about the fact that animals need a place to live. They're not just things that we bump into every now and again. They, they have a right to be here. They have a right to share the resources of the world. And that's one of the things that Great Barrier Reef really represents. It's a place where animals can come and live without being interfered with by the modern world. Well, I'm back with my friend and I loved that video and learning about why we need to conserve the Great Barrier Reef and the land for these beautiful animals. Um, but let's get to back to having let's get back to having a little bit more fun. Wouldn't it be really cool just to jump on the back of well not jump on, but <laughs> to ride on the back of a giant sea turtle and coast through the Great Barrier Reef? Well, you're in luck. We had a friend put a GoPro on the back of one of these sea turtles as he was swimming through the Great Barrier Reef. Let's check it out. Okay, guys. So this is a video of a sea turtle. He has a GoPro on his back. He was not harmed during this. Let's check it out. Beautiful. I love how his legs almost become like, you know, flippers for him. Oh, 
something just over and over there. Anyway, the video goes on. Um, you can literally Google sea turtle um, uh, GoPro, Great Barrier Reef, and you can find videos like that. Um, but I hope you enjoyed watching our sea turtle swim through the Great Barrier Reef. All right, guys, I wanted to share some other really important information about the Great Barrier Reef. Um, not only is the Great Barrier Reef beautiful and home to some of those amazing creatures that we just got to see today, but it's also home to some dangerous animals like the blue ringed octopus. And it might look harmless, but its bite can kill a person in mere seconds. So don't go swimming next to that guy. Uh, jellyfish can also provide some painful stings. And the great white shark is at the top of the food chain in the ocean in and around the Great Barrier Reef. Um, now, today, the Great Barrier, Barrier Reef is one of the seven natural wonders of the world, and you got to see just a little portion of it virtually today. But let's take a look at what it would be like to really visit the Great Barrier Reef underwater, and maybe one day we can actually go and do that. Take a, uh, check it out. Well, guys, I hope you have fun learning about the Great Barrier Reef and seeing how beautiful it is, what kind of organisms live there, what kind of threats that it is facing, and what we can do to help out. I do have some printouts for you that you can uh, use at home, some coloring pages for the younger kids, um, and we will be doing a Kahoot quiz um, based on the information you learned today. It's just a fun quiz to test your knowledge, see how much you learned about the Great Barrier Reef. And now I'm going to go back to the tropical beach and enjoy some time. Bye, guys.